Hello, this is Jane Goodall, and on this World Animal Day, I want to give a little message about animals. I was born loving them. I spent hours as a child outside watching the birds and the squirrels and the fox, if I could manage it, in the garden here in the UK, where, by the way, I've been on lockdown since the beginning of the pandemic. And there was no television back then, so I learned from nature and from books. I had this amazing opportunity, well, I worked for it, but I got to study the animals more like us than any other living creature, the chimpanzees. And they share 98.6% of their DNA with us. And they kiss, embrace, hold hands. They wage a kind of war, but they show love, compassion and altruism. There's good and bad mothers. And knowing all this, how shocking that when, after two years, I went to Cambridge University, I was told by many professors that I couldn't talk about chimpanzee personality or mind or emotion because those were unique to us. Well, fortunately, because of the biological similarity in all the descriptions and film coming from Gombe National Park about the chimpanzees, science was forced out of that reductionist way of thinking. And we now realize we are part of and not separate from the rest of the animal kingdom. And today you can study animal personality, you can study animal emotions, but of course animal intelligence, they are so, so much more intelligent than we ever used to think. And that's not just the great apes and the elephants and the whales and the dolphins, it's, it's birds, it's pigs, it's all the animals we mistreat in our intensive farming, each one of them a personality with a mind and feeling fear and feeling pain. The, mis the, 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 the rats, rats are incredibly intelligent. The giant forest rats have been trained to, de 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 to discover landmines buried deep under the ground. Birds, birds are amazingly intelligent. And some crows can solve certain problems faster than a seven-year-old human. And even the octopus, the octopus are amazingly intelligent and they're so different from us with nine brains, one in the head and one in each arm. And they can solve all kinds of problems. So we have a lot to learn still about these amazing animals. And one thing is clear. We need to stop the cruelty that is so often seen around the world. Animals were not put on this planet as mere things for us to do with as we will. And we're teaching young people around the world, especially through our youth program, Roots and Shoots, and young people hopefully grow up knowing that we need to show greater compassion and respect to animals. It's our disrespect of animals that in part has led to this pandemic because we destroy their habitat, we push them closer to humans in some places. A virus can jump from an animal to a person and maybe uh, can create a new disease like COVID-19. We hunt them, shoot them, eat them, we traffic them, we send them or their parts around the world. There's the mostly illegal exotic pet trade. They're sold in the wildlife markets of Asia. And that's indeed where COVID-19 is thought to have begun. Killing and eating chimpanzees in Central Africa led to HIV AIDS. And many so-called zoonotic diseases have arisen from the cruel, crowded, unhygienic conditions of the intensive animal farms, the factory farms. And so, for our own sake, we need to show greater compassion, understanding and respect for animals. And that means we must also respect their habitat. And it's our disrespect of the habitat that's landed us in this climate crisis. We need to get together as a human family around the world and somehow work out a better way of dealing with, of, of, of interacting with animals and the environment to create a better future, a greener economy, 
respect for all life. Thank you.